Hello and welcome to worship for August the 23rd, 2020. Let's open with a word of prayer. Holy God, as we enter this time of worship, help us to hear what you would have us hear this day. Allow our minds to be cleared of all that clutters it up. Help us to lay our burdens and our worries at your feet during this time of worship and to leave them at the foot of the cross when we leave. Come, Holy Spirit, illumine your word for us this day. Amen. Reading from the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. Listen for God's word. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone he was the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last week, millions of kids returned to school in various formats. More will will return this week. And one of the pieces of those first days of school, in whatever format, is to tell your classmates about yourself and learn a little bit about them. From the all about me posters to two page, two page essays of what I did during my pandemic summer, each of us, each of these are ways for our kids to share something about who they are. Adults do the same thing in various ways. You talk with something, someone, you share something about yourself, and they share something about themselves. I was at the grocery store earlier this week, and I saw someone wearing an Elon jacket, my alma mater, and I had a connection with that person. And, and if we hadn't been breezing past each other in the uh, aisles of the grocery store, maybe I would have struck up a conversation, and probably Elon would have been the, the topic that would have started that conversation. And I've noticed something about myself during this time of extended social distancing and social isolation, when our social interactions have been limited and strained when they aren't limited. I haven't really had to introduce myself to anyone new. At least not many people knew. The limited movements of my life right now have limited even most passing conversations I might have with strangers. They are, there are, of course, some exceptions. I've talked more with my neighbors who walk their dogs by my house more than I ever did before. So those introductions have been reduced and I find myself out of practice. Now, for a virtual conference later this fall, I have received no fewer than two warning emails. They call them reminders, but they really feel like warnings to me. That I am going to have to provide a brief bio for this conference. And since I'm out of the habit of introducing myself, I have to admit that I'm wondering what I'm going to include in that brief bio. It's not like a crisis of really wondering who I am, nothing like that. But it's more of wondering if the way that I would introduce myself now is different from the way I might have introduced myself even just a year ago. How would it be different? Do you think it would be different for you? Maybe your work has changed, so that part of your introduction might be different. But maybe there's something deeper that would change your introduction. I've seen a few funny charts passed around on Facebook about the the importance of various items during the pandemic graphed out. And so in the graph, there's a spike at the beginning for the importance of toilet paper. And then 
the internet always important goes skyrocketing off the top of the chart in importance. And uh, the other things like high heels and dress pants all of a sudden take a nosedive in importance. So even tongue and cheek, there has been a changing of priorities, a changing of what importance different things have in our lives. So have your priorities shifted during this time of life? And how would that impact the way you might introduce yourself, the way you would identify yourself to someone else? Now Jesus asked two critical questions in this passage. He asks, who do others say that he is? And then he asked the disciples, who do they say that he is? Now, what saying what others think about him is the easy question. And so it's the safer question because it's always easier to talk about what other people are saying versus what we really think. So the disciples as a group, they answer that first question. Matthew doesn't tell us if there's a pause, though, after Jesus asked that second question. We could imagine maybe the disciples kind of looking at each other like, okay, which one of you is going to talk first? Maybe all of a sudden the, their sandals become really, really interesting and they're all just looking at them. Or maybe Peter just jumps right in and starts saying, without raising his hand, blurting out, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Now, whether there's a pause or whether there wasn't, all of a sudden that is out there. It's been said. It can't be unsaid. It's been heard. It can't be unheard. And it, there, there it lands, just right in the middle of them. They are standing in the presence, not just of a gifted preacher and teacher, not just of someone who can heal, but they are standing in the presence of the Messiah, the one that they've been waiting for and hoping for, the one who is supposed to save their people, the one that the prophets foretold, the Messiah, this Messiah, is standing in front of them. Can you imagine what that moment might have been like? I imagine there being this, this pause as they kind of look around like, did you hear what I just heard? Did Peter really say that? I can just imagine all the gears turning in the disciples' heads as they start to make new connections, seeing the events of what they've seen and experienced following Jesus, all of a sudden kind of making those connections with this new revelation that's been just spat out there. And Jesus says, that Peter didn't come up with this realization all on his own. And it, he says that, G, that, that God provided it for him. But it must have been one of those moments where someone says something that seems a little strange at first, but then looking back you see that the signs were there all along. But the revealing doesn't stop there. Peter reveals the truth of who Jesus truly is, and in turn, Jesus helps reveal who Peter truly is. Because Jesus renews the name of Peter, which means rock. And Jesus claims that Peter will help provide the foundation for the church that will form after Jesus is no longer walking around being bodily present with his disciples. So Peter reveals something about the identity of Jesus, and in turn, Jesus reveals something about the identity of Peter. In better knowing Jesus, Peter gets to better know himself. Now, this wasn't just some one-time thing. It wasn't just Peter who got to reveal who Jesus was in this one time in history, and that was it. This is something that is ongoing and open to us today. We are able to join in this exploration. When we, when we explore who God is, when we dive into the ways that we see God at work here and now, then, then we can find even more of a revealing of God's identity. And when we do that, when we discover, then 
we will understand more of our own identity. When we seek to better know God, we better know ourselves as well. When Jesus told Peter that he was the rock on which he would build his church, Jesus was revealing both a part of Peter's identity and his purpose. So Peter is not just gaining a better understanding of who he was for his own purposes and self-understanding. Peter was gaining a better understanding of how his identity would help him in fulfilling his purpose. So when we take time to explore who God is, we not only come to the revealing question of ourselves, but we come to revealing our purpose. When we ask the question of who is God, we receive the gift of understanding who am I. This flows into the questions also of how those two intersect. How does my understanding of who God is and who I am created to be reveal the purposes that God has for my life? Jesus tells Peter that he will give him the keys of the kingdom of heaven. He's told that whatever he binds on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever he looses on earth will be loosed in heaven. And there's a lot that's been written about what all of this might mean for today, but let's notice that Jesus is telling Peter that this purpose and what he does in fulfilling it matters. It's not just that his actions or inactions have no consequences. They matter. They are ripples in the pond of creation. This journey of discovery as we seek to discover who God is and in turn who we are is not just an inward journey with no greater purpose than for our own edification or our own individualized understanding. These understandings of the identity of God and our own identity lead us to how we interact in the world. They impact how we interact with others and with this world around us, what we bind up and what we loose in this world. And so think about how you would introduce yourself now. What has God revealed to you about who you are as you have explored who God is? How will you embody that in the living of your life, in the loosing and the binding, in the living and in the dying of your life, how will, how will your understanding of God interact with God's revealing of who you are? Take a moment, pause, and think. And then find someone and introduce yourself. May God be with you. Amen.